Hey guys and welcome to another video. My name is Bilal Ahmed and I'm a conversion rate optimization expert to coaches and consultants. So today we are going to uh, you know go through this case study that I put together and as you can read the title it says how I got insanely high CTRs on YouTube ads, 2.37% on cold traffic and 5.17% on retargeting. So these are basically two different uh, niches. Uh, this one was for a lead gen agency. These retargeting scripts, uh, you know, these were for a stock trading uh, coach. So a coach with, uh, you know, uh, a DFI offer in stocks trading niche. And, uh, you know, when I wrote these scripts, like this one uh, for the cold traffic and this one for retargeting, both of these scripts basically uh, broke the agency that I was working for. That agency is record for cold traffic uh, CTRs and retargeting ad CTRs. And this one in particular caused the media buyer to record a loom where he told me that neither that media buyer nor other media buyers at that agency ever saw CTRs this high uh, on a YouTube ad. So I'm just telling all this to hype you up uh, because I'm going to reveal the entire process that I used to write these ads. And I'm going to uh, you know take you through the entire process and show you how to do that. So without wasting time, let's dive in. Before I do that, I just have to clarify that uh, I did this for the clients of this agency I work for. So they, they, they were not my clients, which is why I'm not going to reveal their names or their offer names or anything like that. So let's dive in. Uh, so the first thing is uh, there was this veteran ad copywriter working for that agency whose script basically inspired me to uh, tweak the template that he used and come up with something uh, that uh, hit uh, highest ever CTR record, cold traffic CTR record at that agency. So the script that he uh, wrote, I cannot uh, share that script here, but I can uh, show you the template uh, from, you know, from beginning to the end. So it starts with a game centric skip stopper, something like, do you want to know how we achieved X without not, with nothing but Y? So for example, do you want to know how we, uh, you know, scaled our business to six figures with nothing but a simple uh let's say uh drop shipping system something like that and then he called out the avatar which is very important so why is this important because uh youtube media buyers would, would know this that when you're running ads on youtube uh you're paying money uh for the for the time someone has watched your uh you know ad so you cannot waste your marketing dollars on people who are basically not your ideal target customers. So let's say you're uh, running ads for a drop shipping offer. You cannot, uh, you do not afford to show those ads to someone who is going to, who is willing to just build any business online. And he's not uh, specifically interested in e-commerce or drop shipping. You must be very specific because you want to make sure that each and every dollar that you're spending uh, you're getting uh, at least two dollars back for for that one dollar that you're spending on YouTube or Facebook or whatever that platform is. So you call out the avatar. You say something like, "If you are a coach or consultant in niche X Y Z, then this video is definitely for you. If that's not you, click skip. But if that's you, keep on watching because this video might uh, you know revolutionize your life or career or whatever it is." Then comes proof via coach authority. So this proof and this template, what I really liked about it, what I really loved about it was that uh, this was, uh, you know, very proof centric. It leaned heavily on proof and multiple types of proof. So for example, the first proof that he used was coach authority. So I am coach name ABC. I achieved X using nothing but uh, product, whatever your product is. And since I have got the whole process dialed in, I've got results using the same thing. And not only I have results, but other people also use this system and achieve these results. And then you talk about those results. Uh, you know, there is no reason to believe that it won't help you. Then you cancel out the alternatives. So you have to make sure uh, that you have to 
sort of uh, you know tattoo this on your target market's minds that it's not fluke it's not uh, because of any other reason it uh, our clients basically they get successful because they totally uh, skip every other thing they ditch every other solution and they focus on what we are selling what uh, what our product is and using that particular product they achieve uh, all these you know outcomes desired outcomes and they don't uh, you know follow x or y or z so for example if you are selling a uh, you know online business model you would say they don't have to so for example if you have a ppc offer to sell a pay pay per click ad offer you would say and our clients achieved all this doing nothing but running ppc ads they never had to do seo they never had to do organic social uh, you know they never had to write books or uh, get featured in major media because pvc works so well for them that's their only client getting uh, strategy and then you introduce the product you tell them what it is what it does for them and then you introduce proof via money so as i said multiple types of proof you show your dashboard your stripe uh, whatever your app is look uh, you know i'm not making these things up uh, th- this is the proof that I've made this much money and that's what I do. So because that's my only source of income, uh, that's what I do for a living and look I've made this much money. Then you use bandwagon proof or herding. So Dan Kennedy talked a lot about that. Uh, so bandwagon proof is basically just telling them that if so many people like 857 coaches and consultants have used this thing. Just an example. So you basically uh sort of tell them that if so many people have successfully used this uh product and achieved exactly what you want to achieve uh why not you and then comes close one so this is something very important to know in a youtube ad especially in the long form youtube ad even if it's not a long format even if it's a short format let's say one minute to two minutes there should at least be two closes so this is something that you uh know from you know conversion rate optimization uh viewpoint uh, so you have to optimize your copy if, if no matter if it's text ad or video ad if it's a sales page or it's an email you have to optimize it for two main types of readers those who are in a hurry in a rush are already happy with your product they don't need uh, much convincing they just need a link to click and buy your stuff so the first close uh, you have to use it for those people and then you have to try out logic so you know stack logical uh, uh, you know arguments uh, on each other and then you use the second proof that okay look uh, it's not just emotional uh, hard hitting there's logic to convince you it has been working for the, these many people this is the process this is the backstage process this is what it looks like this is how it works uh, and then you ask them to buy your thing again. So minimum two closes. But if it's a log format, let's say three minutes plus uh, five minutes, uh, you, you need more closes. Like two is the minimum acceptable and there could be three, maybe four. Uh, that depends. So first close that this copywriter, the veteran copywriter, uh, he used for scarcity. Get 24 hour pass to watch a presentation that shows how we do this. So 24 hour pass sort of creates urgency via scarcity of a limited time. Then you uh, use proof via client success story. And there were multiple client success stories. And all of them were basically uh, based on this pretty simple template. You tell them what your markets, uh, your client, the particular client whose tool you're using, what his hell looked like, looked like. Uh, the troubles that he went through, the problems that he faced, you know, his kids stopped, his wife uh, almost left him, and then he sort of, you know, pulled off this stunt and made everything work. But before you tell them that he made everything, uh, you know, work out in his favor, you basically talk about what you did for them, how you helped them, how they applied your solution, and now what their heaven look, looks like. So his kids are very happy, uh, he can take them to Disneyland, uh, you know, in the middle of the week uh, without having to give a damn about a nine to five job or anything like that. His wife is the happiest l- wife, you know, on God's green earth. You know, uh, they spend, uh, you know, th- they they enjoy vacations. You know, they go to the Bahamas, Bali, whatever you want to say. So anything like that. So you uh, sort of uh, use this particular pattern. Hell, 
what you did for them, how they applied your solution, and uh, heaven. And then you use some uh, objection busters, some even if, some doesn't matter, some without. So your market, uh, it is always thinking while reading or watching your ad and thinking about your uh, offer. And it is uh, continuously, uh, simultaneously disqualifying either you or itself. So you have to keep it from disqualifying both of you. So how would, would it disqualify you? Okay, uh, so you, what's the proof that your solution works? Okay, here's the proof. It has worked for this many people. Here are some testimonials and here's my money. You show them the Stripe, uh, you know, inside your Stripe app. And then they think about uh, their, uh, you know, the, their shortcomings. So, okay, I'm not, uh, tech, I'm not a tech genius. I have never run a successful business in my life. I don't know how to, I don't, I, I know Jack Scott about running an online business. So what's the guarantee it'll work for me? And then you would use these objection busters. So even if you're not tech savvy, even if you never, uh, you know, uh, if even if you never ran an online business before, uh, you know, even if you already have a job, uh, nine to five or your own business, you can still do this thing because it, it doesn't take that much time, something like that. Then you use close to uh, the second close, second CTA. So this uh, copywriter, this veteran copywriter, uh, he used future pacing. So do this and you will be, you know, dr draw their picture, uh, you know, make them picture their heaven. Imagine uh, that you would be enjoying your vacation in the Bahamas uh, in, in only a few months of uh, implementing this system, right? Something like that. So I was very impressed by this template. And as a curious copywriter uh, who basically, uh, you know, earned his copy chops by basically, you know, uh, dissecting a successful copy in 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 his niche i was very curious and i said okay this script is just this template is just as perfect as it gets but what if we can still tweak it maybe change the placement of certain direct response elements and achieve better results so what i did was uh and this is basically the first script that I wrote following this template, but I made a few changes to it. So I wrote the script for a PR guru. Uh, so, and in this hit, that I, the script that I wrote, it hit 1.97% CTR. The original script uh, written by the version copywriter, uh, as per the agency owner, uh, you know, it, it hit 1.5%, uh, I think, or something like that. So I tweaked a little and my script hit 1.97% CTR. So here are the changes that I made. And they, they are not too many changes. Like I used the same template, but I just changed the placement of certain direct response elements uh, and with good reason. So let's talk about them. So the first thing I did was I used the age old DR tricks right in the beginning. So I told them that it's easy. I told them that it's quick and I told them that it's highly effective. Whatever you're selling, your solution is, you uh, sort of use some objection busters, re remove some friction, let your market believe that you can do what you are promising to do. Then I use some even if it doesn't matter tactic before coaches intro. So in original script, these even if and doesn't matter as without, they came after coaches and grow like way down the line but I use them almost up front before coaches intro right then I use specificity a lot so this coach he is no Russell Brunson but he has got some uh, great results and I used all those numbers and celebrity names wherever I could so I was very specific about results that I used uh, numbers names whatnot so then I created demand. So with uh, with this particular tactic, so people told me that this was the most rewarding 33 minutes of their lives. So what I'm trying to sell to this market is a free masterclass. So at this point, as Gary Van Savinga called it, uh, actually he was one of those copywriters who talked about it. He wasn't the inventor of this idea, but the idea is called moving the free line. So when you're writing an ad, you're basically not selling the actual product you're selling the next step in your funnel. So it could be 
of uh, a PDF, it could be any lead magnet, it could be a webinar. In this case, it was a 33 minute webinar. So I created demand, uh, hyped them up about this webinar that people told me this was the most rewarding 33 minutes of their lives. And as you can see, I'm using herding or brand right here. Then I repeated the even if it doesn't matter tactic again. I told them that it works for every market. Um, so then I used a dual scarcity in the last close. So what I mean by dual scarcity, in the original script he, script, he used scarcity of limited time by mentioning 24 hour pass. I used limited time and, uh, uh, you know, technical excuse. So what's the technical excuse? Uh, which is what you often use, uh, you know, when, you, when you're running YouTube ads or Facebook ads. So you pin it on the algo. Who knows if you would ever be able to watch this ad again. So in, in short, it like uh, their subconscious is reading it differently. Okay, this means that I don't have, uh, you know, uh, I cannot always come back to this thing and read it or watch it. Maybe I, I would never be able to see it again uh, or read it again. So let's do it right now. Let's take the action that this guy is asking me to take. So that's how your market interprets this uh, this implicit uh you know uh scarcity so click the link and get a 24 hour pass to watch the presentation so this is for how i use dual scarcity then uh i tweet this script even more so after successfully tweaking the script and breaking the agency's all-time high record for cold traffic ctr i didn't stop i made some more changes to this template while writing a script for this lead gen agency and this time the ctr uh, was 2.37 percent. This time I tested out a brand spanking new tactic, something I never did before. So let's take a look at that. Um, okay, where's that? Uh, so here's the script I wrote for this lead gen agency, the template. So original veteran copywriters template script skip stopper or the first sentence a hook hook uh, whatever you want to call it. It says, "Do you want to know how we achieved X with using Y?" I tweaked it a little. So what I did was I added two more elements to this formula because hook is everything. So what I did was, do you want to know how we helped ABC, and this is the name of the real person uh, that you can look up on Google, achieve X in Y time. So in simple words, the two elements that I added were someone's real name. Uh, in other words, you can say I created a lot more trust and I, uh, you know, used uh, a very specific reference here specificity always wins and the second thing is what uh, everyone does like every great copywriter knows that in a, in a in an ideal headline complex you should always give a time frame for the promise you're making so if you tell people that with my uh, you know ads you would be able to bring in 30 high ticket clients uh, that's one thing and the immediate question that your market is thinking of uh, is, okay, but what's the timeline? Uh, one week, one month, or one year, forever. So that's what they're thinking. So it's always a good idea to add the timeline because this sort of uh, removes friction and creates trust and credibility. So no wonder this uh, script, uh, you know, it broke the all time high CTR record of that agency. So the the second new tactic that I used was I told them that this I told them, told them the secondary benefits of the solution before introducing the coach or company. So I didn't talk about the primary benefit. I still cannot think of the reason why I did this, but this was the second change that you 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 would notice between these two scripts. So I mentioned the secondary benefits of the product. And then I use the good old easy plus effective plus cheap combo while explaining the product. So these are all objection busters. So people are thinking, okay, what you're telling me is good, but it must be expensive. Okay, what you're telling me, uh, you know, it might be affordable, but uh, I don't trust you. I've never worked with you. It's a, I'm, I'm, I'm watching this ad for the first time ever. How do I know this will work? 
And the last thing is, okay, what you're telling me, it might be working for people that have worked with you. It might be cheap also, but is it easy to? Because I'm not tech savvy. I don't want, I don't have too much time. I'm a business owner. I want to focus on bigger things. So you sort of remove friction with using this combo. A cheap, easy, effective, uh, you know, these uh, direct response elements. Then I use the E1F doesn't matter tactic in conjunction with the guarantee. So this is also something different. So uh, I think the sentence that I wrote was something like this, that we guarantee that you would bring in 30 uh, high ticket clients in a matter of 30 days, even if, uh, even if uh, your ad budget is not too high, even if you have never been running ads before, and even if, uh, you know, even if you, your offer is not properly dialed in, something like that. So I use these tactics in conjunction with guarantee. So which means I basically, uh, you know, uh, two X or maybe 10 X the effectiveness of this technique. Then I use the first close, which was see if you qualify things. So this is not an ad for a webinar. We were driving this traffic to a form. They were supposed to fill out that form jump on a call with the agency owner and on that call he was going to convert them so i use the see if you qualify tactic in the first close so it works for service providers it works for especially when your landing page has a survey so you can hype them up about the quiz so national health sherpa some other brands they use quiz funnels a lot so if you're uh, using quiz funnel Running ads for a quiz funnel, you can use this particular close. See if you qualify. There's a quiz that would show you if you qualify or not. Uh, t you know, take this little, this quick survey and find out if you qualify. See what changed their lives. This was the second close. So I cannot show you everything these people did. So I used herding, talked about all the people this agency has helped. I mentioned an exact number maybe, like uh, we have so far we have helped. 1580 clients and then i said now i cannot possibly show you everything these people did but if you click the link you can watch or do the same thing that changed their lives so in this case they weren't going to watch anything so i said if you click the link you can fill out the same survey that they filled out before uh, you know uh, they revolutionized their life and their career whatever it was right so then comes close three, CTA number three, and I used urgency of limited time and slots. Um, okay. So this was about the cold traffic script uh, that, you know, broke the all-time high CTR record. So just in case I didn't make it clear, uh, this was the best script, uh, one of the best scripts actually at this agency, and it hit 1.5% CTR. 1.5% maybe, because uh, I cannot recall correctly. I made some changes to the script, this template, and my script hit 1.97%. Then I made some more changes, and I hit 2.37% CTR. So this was about cold traffic. Now let's talk about retargeting ads. So uh, let's talk about retargeting scripts where CTR simply went through the roof. Uh, the media bar made a loom. Yeah, I have already talked about that. Let me get this out of the way. Okay, so now here's the problem with this coach, this finance guru. So he had literally zero proof elements, uh, literally zero testimonials. And at that agency uh, or anywhere good where people understand direct response, you should know that proof is a copywriter or a marketer's bread and butter. So there are two most important direct response elements when it comes to conversions or sales in simple words. One of them is uh, hitting the right emotional heart buttons of your market. And the second thing is proof. Because when you hit all those emotional heart buttons and when you uh, stack one uh, logical uh, argument over another, your market finally gets to the point where it is willing to buy your product and the only thing that's stopping it is proof because that's the last question okay uh, very tempting very appealing makes sense uh, but uh, what's the evidence that it'll work so proof is very important this guy didn't have any proof all he had to show for his claims was one or two media features and maybe a few true predictions about some particular stocks actually there was only one or two maybe 
So you cannot sell something to a new audience if you've got nothing to back up your claim. So in this case, the audience wasn't entirely new, but if someone hasn't bought something from you and uh, you are retargeting them, they're still sort of new. So that's warm traffic, right? So they haven't bought anything from you and they're not very likely to take action unless uh, you know your marketing is very appealing. So here's what I did. I had literally zero experience with finance markets, so I used this wonderful tool called Wittow. If you know a YouTube channel that's running ads, you can search it with its name and see the top ranking ads. So let me show you what I mean. Just a quick uh, uh, ads. Okay, Facebook ad library. Let me show you what I mean. Uh, so we were talking about okay. Stocks trading, because that was the offer. Uh, and I've got multiple uh, gurus here. So this name, let's check him out first, because we're talking about video ads on YouTube. If you are running Facebook ads, you would come to Facebook ad library. Unfortunately, we don't have a YouTube ad library. So all we can do is we can use, uh, you know, this tool uh, called Wittow. Right, so let's uh okay Over here okay so his name is tim tim okay and i think we've got an ad here copy lead no this is not the right ad i would come here um let me see if we can find some other account. So I'm going to pause it for a minute and let me find someone who is running ads on YouTube as well. All right, so we have found a, uh, you know, uh, a channel in the same niche that is running ads on YouTube. So what I basically did was I went to that coach's brief and I noted down his competitors names and I checked all those names. I just entered them in, in this uh, Wittow search and I was just looking for ads, if any of them was running ads on YouTube. And as it turned out, a couple of them, they were running ads on YouTube. So I went through their ads and I noticed the most important direct response elements and angles and ideas and hooks used in those ads. And then I use those scripts, uh, those angles and hooks and ideas in, in the ad that I wrote for this coach. So for example, I just, uh, you know, you know, I, I've discovered this particular, uh, you know, channel or offer owner, and they've got this ad. You can see uh, a few stats here. We can see the view count. We can uh, see, I think we can see ad budget too. You can see ad spend here. So ad spend is okay. That's very high ad spend as you can see here. Um, and this is per day by the way. Uh, yeah, estimated ad spend on 3rd of June was 20,000 USD. So that's a lot of money, right? And this is estimated because Vitao uh, is a third party tool. So you can only trust it so much. Uh, then you can take a look at views because these are two parameters to define if an ad is successful. So 40, uh, 470,000, uh, you know, views on 11th of June. So this is a lot basically. So this means that this is a successful ad. I don't know if it's the most successful ad, but this is a good ad. But what I can do is I can, uh, search the name of this channel, this company visionary profit. And I would, uh, you know, I would be able to take a look at all their ads and then I, I would be able to pick a winner too. So let's imagine for the purpose of this video, this ad is the winner. I would simply click this ad, I go, I would go to YouTube, watch this ad. $2,000 per month. Okay, I would watch this ad and what I would do is, uh, I would just basically uh, note down the, the direct response elements. So just let me pause it for a second to go back to the slide. All right, so that's what I did. That's how you use Wittow. Uh, so I have already talked about that. I searched for top competitors. Uh, you know, it pulled up their top ads. 
uh, I was looking for hot buttons this market responded to. I realized that in finance, Malaysia, every successful offer owner uses a few themes such as conspiracy, them versus us, and FOMO, fear of missing out. So I knew that I had to use these themes. I then analyzed two to three most successful YT ads in this market and decided to use their major themes. So I picked uh, one particular theme that which is conspiracy or them versus us, you know, combined that government, corporate insiders and major media are in cahoots, right? And you're the little man at the end of the day, you know, you get scared alive, you lose your money, your kids starve, so something like that. So there is this particular offer, this product that can help you leverage the system legally and make just as, as much money as these insiders make. Then I use FOMO. There is this new thing that everyone is using to make a ton of money, but if you won't hurry up, the opportunity will be gone for good. So multiple tricks like these. Uh, so one thing about tar- retargeting scripts. So now I'm talking about uh, how to write uh, retargeting scripts. Uh, first thing is it that you shouldn't assume that your market remembers everything about you. Yes, you have shown your cold traffic ads to them. Yes, they are aware of your offer, but then life gets in the way. Uh, you know, you have to do a lot of things. You're busy with your family. You're busy with your friends. You're busy with so many things. Uh, you know, uh, and uh, at times you forget about that offer. You forget about that coach that uh, appeared trustworthy worthy that you thought would be able to help you. So you have to uh, sort of uh, do a recap of your offer, main promises, main features, and every retargeting ad that you run. Refresh their memory. With, uh, so you do something like this. You're watching this video because you watched a similar video that showed how to achieve desired outcomes. So now they would uh, have this aha moment. Oh yeah, uh, like, okay, I was just thinking where I've seen you guys before, but now I remember, okay, you're those guys, you're that coach. So yeah, this would refresh their memory. Uh, Then retargeting is mostly mainly about busting objections and answering questions, plus keeping the market from disqualifying itself, plus reducing the friction. So four main elements. Uh, retargeting ads are mostly and mainly shorter than uh, cold traffic ads and it's for a good reason. So when you are running cold traffic ads, it's like talking to someone for the first time and you have to be as persuasive as you can. You have to be as thorough as you can. You have to include as much detail as you possibly can. They need to know everything. Why? Uh, what's your offer? Uh, who else has been using it? What have been the results? What do the results look like? Why you and not others? Uh, what's the evidence? Uh, would I be able to achieve the same results as you or your uh, you know, clients who, whose testimonials you're using? There are so many questions, cold, cold traffic audience. So you have to use long form uh, copy, uh, whether it's text copy or video ad. And retargeting is pretty simple. You just refresh their memory and then you basically do these two important things like even if you don't uh, you know want to use these two parts reducing the friction and keeping the market from disqualifying itself it's fine but these are two very important parts because when someone watches your cold traffic ad and they don't take action you should ask yourself why and there could be multiple reasons some of them could be totally out of your ambit and you cannot do anything about them. So maybe they forgot, maybe their wife uh, didn't allow that, uh, you know, them to buy your offer. Uh, life got in the way, kids, uh, you know, school, you know, what not. I mean, imagine a very busy man in his 40s, like that's the target market, who is making money, who's most probably the only breadwinner of his family. So they don't have that much uh, time. They can forget things. So you have to ask yourself why they didn't buy from you. And then you have to exclude all the reasons that are out of your ambit that you cannot do anything about. And just talk about the reasons that are within your ambit and have anything to do with your offer. So maybe you ask yourself questions. Maybe uh, they didn't buy because they had certain objections in their mind. Okay, what objections? The first objection that almost everyone has is, will it even work? 
The second objection is price is too high. These are two most common objections. So bust these objections in your retargeting ad. Second thing is they have answers, uh, questions in their mind that you must answer. So questions like, uh, would I be able to achieve the same results your customers, your clients, your happy clients did? How much time it will take? Uh, uh, how, what's the guarantee it'll work? Anything like that. So you answer some frequently asked questions in your ad. And then these two optional parts, keep the market from disqualifying yourself itself by using even ifs and doesn't matter. So this is also part of sort of objection testing. Uh, so because one objection is that they would have to, you know, on your offer and another would be, uh, you know, uh, you know, about your, uh, about whether they would be able to do anything using that offer or not, because they disqualify themselves too. So use even ifs and without. So you would be able to do this even if you're not tech savvy, even if you never ran an online business before, something like that. And then you reduce the friction. Uh, one way of reducing the friction is uh, what we're doing so far, busting objections, answering questions, keeping market from disqualifying itself. But sometimes you have to uh, take it to the next level and maybe use a guarantee that, okay, uh, even if it doesn't work out for you, you still have 30 day, no question asked money back guarantee, you know, something like that. So, uh, and then you have to use urgency because you want people to buy today, not tomorrow, because tomorrow never comes, right? Uh, in marketing, so people, they are uber aware, they're uber sophisticated. If someone is willing to buy your stuff today, and if you give them time to think about it, uh, give them reason to doubt you, uh, you know, check out your competitors, most probably they won't uh, come back to you and buy your stuff. So you have to use urgency. In some cases, you use uh, scarcity of limited time or limited slots or stock uh, in case of e-commerce. In some cases, you can use hell or heaven or fork in the road kind of urgency. It totally depends on your market. If you're uh, writing for a female coach if, and if your target market especially uh, is mostly women, you might not want to use uh, this hard sell uh, you know, scarcity of limited time or slot. Then you reduce friction by creating trust. So you use new proof elements. New is very important. So if they didn't respond to your cold traffic ad, one of the reasons is that whatever sales argument you use, whatever proof elements you used, they weren't good enough for them. In this case, when you're doing retargeting, and it's always a good idea to avoid repetition. So don't repeat the same old arguments, don't repeat the same old testimonials, especially because they would think that, okay, they've got only these two to three case studies and no one else bought from them. And maybe, uh, as a, I mean, actually, you might be someone with hundreds of testimonials and case studies on their web website. So uh, it's your fault of letting them think that you have only two to three of them. So in every ad, use new proof elements, new testimonials, media features, you know, something like that. So for example, one, one more thing uh, which is important here is that if in previous ads you use testimonials a lot and it didn't work well for you, it means this market is not very responsive for testimonials. Maybe some other type of proof matters more to them. So now you would, uh, use some of the type of proof. It could be media features, it could be money proof, it could be bandwagon uh, or herding, anything like that. So uh, how did I de do that? Uh, now that we're done with this detail, let's talk about the template. Let's see how I actually did it. So the biggest problem, biggest challenge, uh, like I'm not going to talk about the entire template here. The biggest challenge was there was no proof. Like this guy was some somewhat trustworthy because he made up predictions live, uh, made, made, made one or two predictions live and they turned out to be true. But he didn't know how to use that. He didn't have any testimonials for some reason. So what I did was I turned that no proof into, you know, plausible proof. So I, uh, what I did was he basically had a few media features and one or two uh, stock market predictions. So I, have, I noticed that when you don't have some real proof like testimonials, you can use certain other tools to create trust. So for example, you, you can borrow uh, someone else's uh, credibility and trust. 
And here's an example of that. If you're a novice copywriter, and all of us uh, do that, I did that a lot when I was a new copywriter. What you do is you cite this or that book. Okay, clear to make peace said that Barry Pensavinga is a, Gary Pensavinga is of this opinion. Uh, you know, uh, Eugene Schwartz. Uh, you know, he he believed that uh, when every market is so sophisticated and there is no other way to win, like they're aware of all the claims and promises, you have to be very specific. Something like that. So steal other people's authority and create a pretense of authority. That's what all of us do. So it's a dirty secret, but that's uh, how the, you know, uh, credibility works. Uh, this guy's webinar was full of numbers. Not all of those were his own predictions, but he used those examples to prove his point. I used all of those numbers to create a pretense that he had actually cracked the code on options trading. Uh, so yeah, that, that, that's it. This is where it ends. So basically what I did was I used all those charts and visuals and I sort of broke the pattern with them first of all and the second thing is that I basically uh, proved to the market like he was talking and talking and talking it was a talking head ad and uh, there, there were certain text animations that you could see on the screen whatever he was saying whatever promises he was making. And then all of a sudden you start seeing charts and visuals and uh, media features. So this pattern and traps sort of uh, not only kept his market, his viewers hooked, but also, uh, you know, created some sort of trust, which this guy badly needed. And this is how, uh, you know, these retargeting scripts hit 2.79% uh, to 5.17% CTRs. So I wrote roughly four to five scripts for him. Some of them hit around 2.79%. One of them, I think it hit 5.17%. So this is it. This is how you do it. Uh, I'm going to drop the link to this presentation in the description below. And uh, let me know how you liked this presentation uh, in the comments below. So the purpose of this case study was basically to show you how uh, a direct response expert's brain basically works. So if you are interested in, if you are a coach or consultant and you want a conversion optimization expert's eyes on your funnel, especially on your YouTube or Facebook video ads, or your copy otherwise, like your funnel copy, uh, your landing pages, your emails, uh, there's a link in the description below. What you can do is you can click the link and book a free call and I will do a live funnel or copy analysis for you on that call. And if you are uh, an agency owner or if you want a mastermind where you help coaches and consultants in finance niche or any niches for that matter, and you want uh, you know a crow expert to you know jump on those calls with your coaches and consultants and help them see the uh, see the loopholes in their marketing messaging and help them fix those uh, you know fill those gaps. Uh, I can definitely help. All you have to do is you know the same thing. Just click the link in the description and book a free call with me, and let's take it from there. Thank you.